The discussion around open networking has become broader during the past year or so as multiple network operators explore options in the radio access network. But open telco trends are impacting developments in many parts of the wide area network architecture. So I'm talking today with Tim Doiran, Senior Director of Solutions Marketing at Infinera, about some of the open networking options available to operators. So Tim, most people probably think about Infinera as a traditional optical networking systems vendor. Uh, how is Infinera playing a role in open networking? Yeah, Infinera is actually focused in uh, three key areas right now. Um, first is open and disaggregated routing. Um, we're also focused in the area of open optical networking. And then um, the third is intelligent software automation that's really needed to bring these uh, types of solutions to the market and make them operationally uh, successful. So is it inevitable that networking infrastructure becomes open and disaggregated? So I don't think it's inevitable, but history does teach us a few lessons. Um, we can go all the way back to the original network function virtualization journey um, that you know a lot of uh, network operators have been on. And the original concept there, of course, was to separate software functions that we might have run on purpose-built hardware from more generalized underlying compute resources. Think about things like firewalls uh, as an example, where the software um, is elevated and the underlying compute hardware can actually change at its own pace while maintaining the same type of functionality um, from a software perspective. We also see that happening today with 5G and the radio access network, where the radio unit, the distributed unit, and the centralized unit, those functions of the RAN are all being disaggregated so that they can be deployed in a, in a variety of manners in separate locations or in common locations, um, but also so, service, so individual vendors um, can focus on those particular functions and thus accelerate the pace of innovation of, of those functions and also create a mix and match approach um, that is, in, in, uh, uh, is multi-vendor uh, by its very nature. Um, so we'll continue to see that type of thing happen uh, in part, of course, because it benefits uh, service providers um, over time. And how is the approach to disaggregated routing different from open optical networking? Um, yeah, in the case of disaggregated routing, um, we're taking the network operating system software and we're um, uh, abstracting or uplifting that, if you will, and separating it from the underlying merchant uh, silicon packet processing. Um, compare that and contrast that to open optical networking, where with open optical networking, what we're doing is we're separating the optical engine function that is where the, uh, the wavelengths are, are launched and received, we're separating that from the underlying um, optical line system. And that lets those two technologies, the line system and the transponder and optical engine uh, part of the solution, um, uh, innovate and, uh, and adapt at their own pace uh, and their own uh, capabilities. Now, developments related to open optical networking have been ongoing for a few years now, but it seems like there are greater levels of activity and interest in 2021. Why is that? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right in, um, in terms of the level of interest in, and uh, uh, participation. You see things like uh, uh, things happening in the Telecom Infra Project, Open Networking Foundation. Um, there's a lot of kind of uh, industry collaboration, if you will, about making this real and solving some of the challenges uh, that, that are there to make it happen. Um, but I think kind of just like when you think about the advent of the smartphone, um, you know, why didn't the smartphone happen sooner? Um, and the answer of course is it's, it's, it's about uh, timing and it's about multiple technologies coming together um, that enabled it to, to happen and to, to be so. And so the same is true with uh, open optical networking. We really have the convergence of 
uh, coherent digital, uh, coherent DWDM solutions with digital signal processing that goes all the way back to 2010. But that started to enable this separation of the, the transponder functionality from the line system functionality, and they no longer need to be so tightly coupled. Um, in addition to that, from an industry collaboration perspective, we have um, a lot of work behind um, unified data models, um, which is really the ability to abstract these network elements and, and pieces of the, of the network. And then we have open and programmable interfaces um, that allow or enable this, um, these types of solutions to, to change and adapt and, and to be um, real-time programmed. So when you kind of put that all together, um, what you see is a, a frame of multiple technology threads coming together uh, and a desire um, to um, accelerate the pace of innova innovation around um, optical engine uh, technology. And what kind of benefits are network operators seeking when they move towards open optical networking architectures? Yeah, really, whether it's, um, whether it's talking to service providers directly or in multiple primary research projects where we've uh, participated or, or helped sponsor, we see that same kind of consistent theme emerge. And that, that theme is um, they want to um, avoid their network being locked in so that they don't have to live with their purchasing decisions um, for extended periods of time. Like I, I made this uh, buying decision and now I have to live with it for 10 years or, or some extended period of time. So that's number one. Number two is the desire for continued um, uh, benefits in terms of economics. Can we keep uh, you know, getting more and transmitting more bits um, at an increasing value uh, in the network? And then third, and really almost mo the, the most important item is the ability to accelerate the pace of innovation. And so by separating the line system from the uh, optical engine technology, service providers can benefit from the next generation insertion of um, the next optical engine, like to, as an example, like today's 800 gig fifth generation coherent solutions that are um, uh, breaking records in terms of uh, performance and uh, the distance that they're able to go uh, both terrestrially, terrestrially and also in submarine networks uh, as well. So there are a number of benefits to operators, but what are the key challenges facing network operators in terms of open optical networking adoption? What might be holding them back? Yeah, so open optical networking by its very nature is multi-vendored. Um, what we're talking about um, from a, a network perspective that's beneficial to service providers is the ability to take the next generation of optical engine and transponder, muxponder, pluggable technology, and run that over a third party or another vendor's um, optical line system. In order to do that, clearly um, um, service providers need to think about the operational aspects of dealing with multiple vendors, but also that's where um, SDN control, network abstraction, and software automation really come in to make that solution um, both deployable, but also um, manageable and, uh, and evolvable over time. And so uh, that investment is, is critical in, in terms of service providers preparing their existing network uh, while obtaining the benefits uh, from open optical networking in the future as they can insert these next generation of optical engines into their existing network infrastructure. Okay, well, I mean, this is a, a really interesting area of development in the industry right now. And I know there's a lot more operators looking at these options. So Tim, great to talk to you today about these developments in the industry. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot, Ray. Great to be with you uh, and the audience here today. Really appreciate it.